Welcome to the Movement PT Coffee Cast, where we sit down and talk about physical therapy, health, and whatever else comes to mind during our coffee-infused conversations. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Movement PT Coffee Cast. My name's Dalton, and with me, as always, is my beautifully bearded friend, William. William, how are we doing today? Doing uh, super awesome. I, I saw those mugs that you got from, uh, from Cash. Whoo, man. I, that is a good reason to be super awesome. Like, dude, I was so pumped when I, uh, I opened that box and I saw those mugs, man. That's literally probably one of the best things I've ever received. I hope you guys all who are listening uh, saw that on our, we posted it on our page, but, but Cash sent us some hilarious mugs uh, with our logo on it. And then from a couple of old posts that we made, uh, he put those posts on the mug, which is just hilarious and awesome. Yeah. The finishing touch will be when we put out Andy's uh, old, um, his version of that. Old, old man, Andy. Old oh, man, Andy. Andy. I can't wait. I, I know he's got some good store. It's old store. old man embark lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> can't wait. Oh. So guys, we're back at it again this week. Um, doing a little bit of different podcasts. We're not interviewing anyone. Me and Will thought that it would be fun to uh, just sit down and talk. Um, Will kind of had some thoughts on a topic that um, I thought was a good idea. So we're like, hey, why not? record something, see what comes out of it. Uh, So we hope you guys enjoy it. Before we get started though, guys, again, we just want to thank you for always supporting us on the podcast, going on iTunes, subscribing, leaving us reviews, uh, sharing our episodes. Uh, That's a big thing that helps uh, spread our our voice, spread our podcast. So we just want to thank you for doing that. And if you haven't, go do it right now. (laughs) All right, well, what are we doing? What are we talking about? Well, so I I think maybe we should preface it by, um, by just saying, you know, I, I saw and I listened to actually the podcast with Greg Lehman as the new co-host of the NAF podcast with Adam Meekins. And they were talking about expose versus protect. I don't know if they call it something else, but it's essentially like, you know, the idea that a lot of what we do as rehab professionals and physiotherapists is deciding, you know, when to, protect versus expose somebody to whatever it is, a painful movement, exercise, uh, or just, just, uh, something in general, a movement. And, uh, and I was kind of thinking about it and, and we've had that kind of conversation before, you know, about the challenges of when to decide whether to expose or protect somebody. And, uh, I was just thinking about it because I, I think it's something that we didn't really cover that well in school. I think in school, we learned a lot about how to protect somebody from a movement. And I don't think we learned as much about how to expose. Yeah. I mean, just on the topic of expose versus protect, that's something that I openly have trouble with, you know, on a daily basis in the clinic. I think it's something that's, difficult to grasp. I think it comes with time in terms of just working with people and seeing a lot of different, um, different cases, different, um, ways people react to, to maybe certain movements or certain loads or, or certain injuries. Um, but it's definitely something that I've struggled with. And I think more honestly, um, interesting enough is like when to protect someone, like when someone is maybe pushing themselves too far or too much into that, that pain or um, what does Greg call him? Like an endurance coper, right? I think. Mm-hmm. So like when, when I find um, gradually loading someone or progressing someone, I feel like I have a good idea of, of that. But I think um, when you need to maybe protect them and how you go about protecting them in terms of what you're doing in that intervention, I think is challenging at times. Um, but I do agree with, with the point that you brought up with regards to like physio school um, and maybe not teaching us how to expose. I think oftentimes we do preach that idea of like protect, 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 which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, but it can, it can be negative. Um, if we 
instill fear in people or we're not progressing people back towards like the things that they want to do or that is aligned with their goals. Um, so like, what are some of your thoughts on um, like what we did learn in physio school about that um, and maybe what you think we could do better um, with the education around that? Well, to start it off, I, I feel like we did talk a little bit. We did talk a little bit about graded exposure, but first of all, not everybody got uh, exposed to that content, <laughs> you know, because it was in an elective course and it was sort of that classic graded exposure. You know, you're introducing someone to um, something that's feared and you're gradually kind of exposing them to that. But I don't think that's always how it is in the context of like physio, you know, it's, it's more like the fact that pain doesn't always equal to tissue damage and depending on the person, you know, depending on their thoughts, their beliefs, uh, and, and all that sort of thing, you know, a myriad of different factors. Uh, it might be important to actually allow some pain during exercise and actually expose them to the painful movement. Not for everybody. Mm -hmm. right? Like It's not going to be every time, but mm -hmm. if we don't address that that can sometimes be effective or needed, mm -hmm. uh, even at possibly like the end of, of the rehab plan of care, you know, like at what point do you – encourage somebody to to experiment with the movement that was once painful or are we just saying that there are movements that are inherently bad mm -hmm. because i think we did do a lot of that in mm -hmm. pt school not yeah. every prof not every time but i think a lot of the times we're leading with with fears ourselves as students and right. that can kind of uh that can kind of be portrayed to the, to our patients potentially. For sure. I think, I think the biggest point you said, and um, a reason why maybe it wasn't preached as much about um, exposing people or that was like a focus often is because of the, the, the understanding of pain, like how we were educated on it. That, that idea of like pain doesn't always equal damage was something that like we obviously talked about but i don't think like it was laid down as a framework enough like throughout the process of like the program and i think when you don't have that understanding is when it's hard for like even like myself when i was like was out when i was a student or when we were students before we started like learning about some of the other stuff with regards to pain was like yeah you didn't want to expose or you didn't want them to have pain and that was something that was preached at times like even like when I remember being on some of my placements right is like you don't want to ha cause any pain to someone which we obviously know that that's not necessarily true so I think that was one of the biggest things that in physio school I think maybe if we um, started to have a better understanding about that or preaching that more in a framework of care um, would be would be a good start. And I mean, we got to remember, we're, we're just talking based off our own experiences, right? So who knows, like, what's being taught, like, things are getting better, like, things are changing, there's probably there may be other schools out there that have a better like that things are, are better. But we're just speaking like, from our perspective, just so like, everyone's kind of clear on that. But um, what are some things like, do you remember from school that like would maybe set someone up for having that mindset of like not wanting to expose people like being almost almost scared to like push somebody. Yeah, I think it has to do with just a misconception of the idea of stress because stress is just stress. More stress isn't necessarily bad. I, I feel like a good example is in the shoulder because we learn about impingement. As a, as a good example in uh, our master's degree and it was kind of framed in this way like we need to teach this person to avoid impingement or else they're going to have pain if not now they're going to have it later 
if we actually look at the literature, we see that uh, impingement's often normal and not necessarily predictive of pain. So at what point are we taking this person with a painful shoulder and exposing them to overhead movements? Because the danger of teaching the model that we got taught is that people come out of school and they actually are worried about people doing overhead movements uh, regardless of how it's performed. And it's like this idea that that just always has to be avoided because there's impingement. Yeah, I think that's a good point. And I, and I can think back to school and remembering just like some comments that I heard about like why like we shouldn't shoulder press or we shouldn't overhead press or we shouldn't be loading people in that position. And like, it's just like, man, it's just not good. Like it's just not good to have that mindset. Cause it's not true, man. There's no, it's not true that it's not good to do that. And like you're instilling that in, in people that are coming to you, you know, for help. And like, you can just see how that, that can go down that vicious cycle. So I do, I yeah. do, I do agree with you. Um, on that for sure. I think it comes back to like just having more, more movement optimism, I guess, or like more, yeah, like more movement optimism at movement optimism as like, (laughs) dude, it's cause I'm drinking this wine, man. I shouldn't be drinking this wine. (laughs) It's supposed to be the PT coffee cast, man. Guy has like one sip of wine. He can't even say movement optimism. Um, I think you're right though. You know, because what, what does it mean to be a movement optimist, right? Like that kind of means that you believe people are adaptable. Mm -hmm. And I think that comes down to the idea of habituation, you know? And I like to think of it sort of like you're, you're building up your tolerance to a movement, right? So that could be like compared to jumping in a swimming pool. If, if the, the water's too cold to begin with, you know, maybe that's not going to go very well because you're just going to have to jump right back out. But if it's a, it's a, a decent temperature, you know, and maybe we can conceptualize pr- protection as uh, getting it to a point where the temperature is at least tolerable, you know, you can get in that pool. And then once you're in the pool, you know, we have the ability to get used to that stimulus, right? That's habituation. I feel like that's what movement optimism is. We know the body can adapt. Maybe sometimes we have to give it the opportunity. uh, And that's that protection. That might be showing someone a different way to move or a position to avoid temporarily. But then we also have to show people how to expose and and, uh, get used to that stimulus. Yeah, that's a good point. I think think like in school we did like – they did do a good job of teaching us, I would say maybe why it's important to protect, I guess, or like, like ways to protect people. But I think one thing that always frustrated us um, in ways was like, how do we progress people along? Like, how are we getting these people back to what they want to do instead of just taking away or protecting them? Um, And that can even come back to like having a proper understanding of like loading principles and, and maybe more of some of those like basic understandings of strength and conditioning principles and stuff like that, that we didn't really get in school. So, I mean, that can be another reason why um, it's important to have those things in, in like our education. Yeah. Cause there's a lot to it, right? Like you mentioned some good points there uh, about learning about strength and conditioning principles, but it's also like, what about just, learning about teasing out different psychosocial factors and then deciding, is this person ready to expose? Do I have to address a belief before we can kind of do that? You know, because I think, and and I don't know, but definitely it can impact, right? If somebody's really fearful, really worried that that movement they're going to do is going to cause damage, Mm -hmm. you know, you might be, fighting losing battle trying to just get them to expose right away right like yeah that's a good point so there's lots of things there to learn and i think we need to uh spend a lot more time talking about those things in school Hmm. um so what do you think would be like a solution 
for that. Like it's easy. It's easy. I mean, it's easy for us to sit here and be like, Oh, I wish we had this and this is the problem and blah, blah, blah. But like, what do you think a solution would be for um, physiotherapy, like education to, to help um, better prepare um, younger clinicians to have this understanding of like exposure versus protection and how to do it um, in a gradual appropriate way? Well, you know, it's a difficult question and definitely don't know the answer to that, but it has to start with teaching the point of exposure, progressive overload in the context of pain. That's, you know, yeah. And we have to teach the fact that we're adaptable. There's no inherently bad positions, only positions we're not prepared to prepare for. Mm-hmm. But like, it just has to be taught. You know, it has to be started uh, and we have to provide examples of that, you know, uh, examples of how to expose people. Um, the shoulder was one example, you know, there's many others. Uh, so I just feel like starting to implement some of that, maybe it's more pain science included in the context of our other classes. Yeah. That's, that's it. I think for sure. I think it's like, um, layering on that understanding of pain in the biopsychosocial framework within the other classes and how that, that plays into like, um, someone's care and like all aspects. Cause I feel like we got a lot, we got a lot, like we talked a bit about like psychosocial factors and we talked a bit about pain science and we talked a bit about like when, like progressing people with exercise, like, but understanding when and how and um, within that biopsychosocial framework, I think is something that we didn't constantly get. Like it it seems like we were hit all the time with like, like things like biomechanics and how this is going to cause, like how this is going to affect pain. And if you, if you have someone continue to do this, they're going to have more damage. Like those things were very much talked about often in a lot of classes and layered on like almost like a biomedical model. But I think maybe making that shift to layering it all within like that biopsychosocial framework um, yeah. would be a big way to, to help improve that understanding. It's something that uh, I, I've read a bunch with uh, lots of Greg Lehman's blogs is like, it's the biomechanics that challenges the biomechanics. So I think we actually, we've got to start updating our current, even biomedical information Mm -hmm. like things like the impingement i don't think that's any longer accepted in the literature you know so it's got to move on it's got to move forward Mm -hmm. even just the biomechanical side right right yeah that's a good point but we don't know it all so that's the cool thing about this podcast is like hopefully some students will reach out to us or some other clinicians with some ideas and thoughts on this topic for sure. I think I, and I, and maybe, and who knows, maybe it has got, maybe it's different. Like I, I would love to hear from students or um, even people from our program, maybe like, maybe they, maybe it's been changed. Like since we were there last year, you know, like, is it, is it being, are things changing? Are things getting better? Um, which I, I'm positive that they, that they are. Um, but yeah, you're right. I think that's the cool part about this. And again, this is something that me and you struggle with all the time. That's the funny part is like, oh. I, in on the daily in the clinic, I'm, I'm having trouble with that. And I've made mistakes, man. Like I've definitely, I've definitely exposed someone, um, and way too quickly when I probably shouldn't have, you know, and you know, you learn, you learn from it. Um, and, and I think the thing is too, like if we're, just to go off that, um, is that like, that's kind of part of it too, right? Like that, that's, that's an expectation that, that can be set with the client. If like, if you start from the hop on proper education of things, I think like when you're trying to test someone to try to get them back to what they were doing. And like, in my case, it was someone who's trying to go back to being a, a paramedic that needs to be, you know, very active lifting things needs to have a lot of tolerance to load. Um, you know, you kind of have to test them and push them and, and I did that on a, on a time where like she was feeling a lot better. And like, I was like, all right, let's go, let's try to step it up. And it was just, you know, it was too much too fast. And it, 
it like flared her up and you're just like, well, you know, maybe I, maybe I shouldn't do that. <laughs> shouldn't have done that. You know? Yeah. And, and that was a conversation that, the cool part about it is like, she, she's a good, she was a good person to work with. And I, we had a good relationship from the start. So that was good. And I kind of like, I've been telling her along the way, like, here's what we're doing. Here's why we're doing it. And this is, this is potential. Like, what's going to happen. You know what I mean? Like kind of already setting those expectations. So then like when it did happen, she had an understanding and I, and you know, I was like, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to, but like now at least we know like, Hey, you're not there yet. Like here's where we need to, to play with your tolerance. Like maybe we step it back a little bit. Maybe we give you more rest time between loading, like different stuff like that. And she was cool with it. You know, like she, she understood. So you know, that, that stuff happens, man. Yeah, I think that's actually a huge point too because like if, if you don't set those expectations and I've, I've done that before, you know, I, I've forgotten to kind of set expectation because I don't know, sometimes you get excited and you're like, I just want to load, you know, <laughs> we like strength and conditioning. So we want to get this person loaded and they come back and you're like, ah, you know, and, and if you haven't set those expectations that this might happen, you know, the human body's unpredictable, pain sometimes unpredictable, and you might have to like play with the variables, uh, then they can come back and you, you're looking at a rougher kind of situation there because you got to dig yourself out of a hole, you know, but yeah, it's a good point. You know, we don't, we don't have all the answers. It's a really challenging thing. Mm-hmm. You know, but we've got to focus on both sides of the coin. No, you do, you definitely do. And I mean, I learned from it, man. Like I look, I reflect back on it. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I probably changed too many variables at once. Like I gave her, I gave her a new, gave her a new exercise. I increased her load. I, in, I, in, um, I changed up a tempo of something. Like, you know what I mean? Like I, I manipulated too many things and it was too much. And, and now, you know, like. You got to slow your roll maybe sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. Yeah. But yeah, man, I think that was, I think that was good. Did you kind of hit everything that you were, you had in, uh, on your mind about that or what? I think so. Yeah. I just want to get the thought out there, you know, hopefully to just start thinking about, I think it's a really important uh, aspect of what we do. Mm-hmm. And so we should probably, talk about that more and talk about reasons why you might want to expose someone or you might want to protect them. You know, what is it about a person's presentation that leads you towards one or the other? Mm. Yeah. I think we might have to get um, a said individual who we're, we're not going to say his name because we say his name all the time on the podcast, but we (laughs) might have to get that said individual on the podcast for a second episode and maybe we could talk about that. Hell yeah. I bet you he's got lots of thoughts on it. I may know someone who knows him. So I'll get in contact. I'll get in contact <laughs> with him and see. You know somebody who knows somebody? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, guys, we're going to wrap it up there. Um, if you like this episode, show us some love, go over to iTunes, subscribe, um, drop us a review, share it with one other person. Again, guys, we're so thankful for the support you guys give us on a daily basis. It means a lot to us. Um, if you aren't following us on our social media platforms, check us out uh, at the MVMT PTs on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Um, if you have any questions um, and you don't want to reach us, reach out to us on those platforms, you can email us at the movement PTs at gmail.com. Will, got anything? Yeah, let us know if you have any comments or thoughts you know we we genuinely want to hear it uh what your thoughts are whether you're a student or clinician or or just whoever you are just reach out to us let us know yes all right man (laughs) a pleasure as always guys thank you very much we'll see you soon peace